Hey students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is US aid to Europe. And here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. So in the last video, you learned about the Cold War, an ideological battle between the US and the Soviet Union. And I said that the Cold War was an unusual war that was fought with unusual tactics. Today, we're going to look at two tactics that the U.S. used to help spread capitalism in Western Europe. Western Europe after World War II was in really bad shape. Millions of people had died, millions of others were injured, and cities were in ruins. Here are some pictures that show the devastation of cities in Western Europe after World War II. In order to help rebuild Western Europe and to help spread capitalism, the U.S. government created something called the Marshall Plan. This was named after the U.S. Secretary of State, Mr. Marshall. And the Marshall Plan was a program of financial assistance to Western Europe after World War II. Basically, the U.S. gave Europe a ton of money. It was over $15 billion. And the U.S. feared that without that money, there would be poverty and instability in Europe, which could increase support for socialism. Their thinking was people in Western Europe were desperate and the U.S. needed to help them before Russia did. So that's the Marshall Plan. Now let's look at another way the U.S. tried to spread capitalism in Europe, the Berlin Airlift. <clears throat> and before you can understand this event, you need to know how Germany was divided during the Cold War. After World War II, the Allies divided Germany. The western half was controlled by the U.S. and it became capitalist, while the eastern half was controlled by the Soviet Union, and it became socialist. So Germany was two separate countries, West Germany and East Germany. Now look at Berlin the capital city of Germany. Berlin is in East Germany, the socialist country. But the city itself was also divided in two, with one half controlled by the U.S. and the other half by the Soviet Union. The U.S. half was West Berlin, which was capitalist, and the Soviet half was East Berlin, which was socialist. So West Berlin was an island of capitalism surrounded by socialist East Germany. You can remember these because the West is associated with capitalism in both West Germany and West Berlin, whereas East is associated with the Soviet Union and socialism in both East Germany and East Berlin. In 1948, Stalin decided to cut off all supplies to West Berlin, and this was called the Berlin Blockade. Stalin hoped that the U.S. would not risk a fight over the city and that people in West Berlin would be forced to give in to Soviet control, so he would take control of all of Berlin. But in response, the U.S. undertook the Berlin Airlift. This was a military campaign that used airplanes to provide food and other supplies to residents of West Berlin. Airplanes took off from West Germany around the clock, flew into East Germany, and dropped supplies over West Berlin. The airlift continued for over a year until Stalin gave in and lifted the blockade. It was a victory for the U.S. Okay, let's recap. What did these two events, the Marshall Plan, and the Berlin Airlift have in common. First, they both provided aid to people in Europe. The Marshall Plan provided money, and the Berlin Airlift provided supplies like food and coal. Second, both events represent tactics that the U.S. used to fight the Cold War without using any actual fighting or violence. And now it's time to review the objectives. If you don't know the answer to any of them, just rewind the video and look again. And I will see you in class. Bye, students.